And welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. When last we left our intrepid astronauts, they were aboard the space station, creatively named Space Station One, which has so far been assembled in orbit from a number of component ships. The last trip involved putting these two landers onto it, docking them to it. And now, on the two remaining side-mounted docking ports here, we need to attach two more landers. So let us adjourn to the Vehicle Assembly Building and get started on some design. Now, the two landers that are already there are lightweight, small-sized, small-powered, low-powered vehicles intended for landing on and returning from low-gravity bodies. For this, we're going to be building a heavy lander, something that is capable of a little bit more. So, let's go ahead and start out with docking port on the end. Let's go ahead and run this up here. It's going to need to be anyway. And let's see. Parachute mo module. I think three of them should be sufficient. Let's make sure we're not blocking the ladder. Not. All right. All right. Let's see here. Um, want an advanced SAS on here. RCS fuel. And main fuel. And of course, thrusters. This part of it, we'll, we'll be powering that with the Rockamax Poodle engine. And this is pretty much the ascent stage, the liftoff and return stage. And so for the descent stage, Will be powered by the LV 909s. All right, let's uh, go ahead and stratify this. Everything is nice and stable and uh, not going to flop around or fall apart. And remember, this thing has to survive launch from the planet's surface from Kerbin to get it up to the space station. All right, here we go. And now. Fuel and I believe a mainsail here. I 
This will be the final stage of delivery to orbit. And not one, not two, but three sets of separatrons to not only separate this from the main ship, but hopefully give it enough reverse thrust to ensure that it deorbits. If it doesn't, we'll deal with it, but I'm kind of hoping it will. Let's pay attention to staging here. That's this engine. This is the descent engines. There's our final uh, orbit insertion of space station approach engine. And these separatrons need to fire when that decoupler does. Alright. Let's go ahead and give this a name and start saving the progress here. Heavy Lander Mark 1. Alright. Now for the main booster, or part of it. That which is going to do the main job of getting this thing into orbit. sense a strut problem here, so... Ah. That was not straight. Well, you are going to be that way. Better. I'm not sure if it's perfect, but it's a lot better. Notice that uh, the overheating problem with the mainsails is a lot less so. We have a small tank down here between the big tank and the mainsail. So, go ahead and do that. Apply some struts to the join here.
mainsail. And now I already know this doesn't have enough delta V by itself to get very far at all. Alright, so... Good. Copy that. Put it over here. Right on here. I believe I should probably strip these as well. should prevent any ah oh. control Z strutting here and then we will eventually have a launch vehicle with we'll start off with five mainsails running full bore that should do a pretty good job of getting it up there at least I certainly hope so fuel line from here to here. Let's try doing it right. All right, good old asparagus staging.
and all of our engines move down to the right place. here. That means these, this one and this one drop off first and then these drop off and then we have the central stack to carry it the rest of the way. And of course more struts. Alright, looking good so far. While I'm at it, let's go ahead and throw some more separate charms on there because they're cool. There, that makes sense. Okay. That's better. Now I have to split them off or they're all going to fire at once. So far, so good. Okay, separate charms look good. Save that. Let's see what I can do with an action group. Toggle the gimbal. Okay, good. So custom one will be to deactivate the engine gimbling on the outer four. I need anything else in the way of an action group. Oh, there is something I forgot up here. Lander legs. That would have been embarrassing to get all the way down to touchdown and realize there's no lander legs. Oh, 
Alright. That'll be good. And while we're at it, adding some utility things like that. Let's, uh, just for grins. Put those on here. And over here, put the uh, wide beam variety. difference between these two is. I'm just going to put some of these on here so that it has the ability to refuel its electrical supply. And now a lander would hardly be complete without some means to reach and then return from the surface. I don't need four of them either. What do you think? Will that arrangement work? Let's throw a few of these on here just to be sure. It may be redundant. Even excessively so, but what the heck. Maybe I can move this over. Alright. That looks like it's close enough to the capsule to get onto it. This one isn't going to go far enough down. Unless I do this. And that. Overlap them. I was hoping that'll work. They'll be a long way from home when they try it, so let's hope it works. <laughs> Alright, it looks to me like our heavy lander is ready for a test flight. So, let's do that. Alright, and we have Lanhat Kerman, Milken Kerman, and Mundo Kerman. Good old Mundo. All right, they are our courageous test pilots, and the first thing we do is action group one, disable the engine gimbling. In the meantime, let's fly this thing. Throttle up. And we go. And 
that action group didn't seem to work. And I find myself having to lock the gimbals manually. Staging seemed to work pretty good, though. All right, that means on future flights, lock the gimbals manually before launching, because apparently the lock gimbal action group doesn't work for diddly. And the workaround with the extra fuel tank here seems to be doing very nicely in keeping the overheat problem down. So now let's start pitching. Separatrons are doing their jobs very nicely. Back on our heading. Speaking of which, let's see how we're doing here. Apple Apps is 43,000 and climbing. Very good. Fuel in that stage about, well, about shot. That's all right. And at staging, we will shut down and assess the situation for a second. As a matter of fact, this is very good. We're up to about 90 apolapsis. A little bit over. And I'll bet we've run out of fuel. Okay, good. Stage. Alright, we are now free. Quickly. Grab a maneuver. Okay, that's not ideal, but it'll do. We're almost at burn time. And lock it down right there. And we burn. An awful lot of wobble there. Throttling back. It's going to make for a longer burn, but it's better than shake it apart. This thing needs more strutage in here somewhere to prevent that fishtailing so that we can actually run this mainsail at full power. Although it seems that I can accelerate a little bit at a time. but no more than about two-thirds.
and I know my burn trajectory is not ideal. All right, throttle down and stage that. You see the problem there. <sighs> now that piece went flying away really quickly. I don't think it's going to deorbit though. However, Heavy Lander Mark 1 is going to deorbit. Okay. Does not have enough juice to get all the way up into orbit, so I realize I could start that poodle engine and probably do a little bit of salvaging this if I had done it a little sooner. Go ahead and activate the poodle and see if it's just at all possible to set this thing down safely under curved gravity. It's a failed mission in its original intent, but who knows? It might prove useful in some other capacity. And I realized that, once again, I have a rather tall lander with an incredible amount of fuel on it, but, as I said, its purpose is... to be able to land on and return from somewhat larger bodies than your basic small, tiny moon or asteroid. I actually had to throttle down some because it was decelerating so much it was going to start accelerating upward. And yes, I realize the landing legs are kind of ridiculous over the ocean. It's just a matter of following procedure. And I think it looks cool. So these engines can actually land this thing on Kerbin, from the looks of it. I'm going to probably end up staging it and using the parachutes at the last minute, but still, this is a good proof of concept. It's a long way from what I want it to do, but it's a good proof of concept. It's not going to have enough fuel to do it under curb and gravity. Because there's no fuel lines feeding these outer engines. And I don't think the poodle by itself can do the job. Stage those away and we'll find out. How about that? It's still decelerating.
let it fall a little bit throttle back to my full Nine hundred meters to go. Can it slow down to less than ten meters a second before hitting the water? It looks to me like it can. Yep. And a last minute switch to the parachutes. Okay, we have a safe landing. We had a good flight that wasn't perfect, and it proved that this ship has a lot of redesign in store for it. But I think the main thing is optimizing the booster. This thing needs more thrust, more liftoff and more get up and go when it needs to get up and go in order to deliver the lander intact with full fuel tanks and never having have to fire its own engines at the fuel sta at the uh, space station so we'll work on that some more in the next episode thanks for watching take it easy i'm out of here